Now, one thing is that, that I know comes up, and I've had conversations with friends of mine that are that are parents of, of younger children, and they keep their kids away from certain types of books. And one in particular is is Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, so, if for one, why you know? Because I'm I don't understand. Because like I said, I never I've never read the book. I don't I don't I don't know a lot about the story. So, why is it that some Christians are are concerned with maybe engaging in some of these books? And how are you addressing that? In, in Hollywood Heroes. Yeah, we do cover it in there. And look, we respect parents. If, if they want to keep their kids away from any movie, that's up to them. That's fine. Uh, you know, I, don't, I have no objection. You don't want your kids watching something? That's fine. That's your call. You're the parent. Uh, but I think some of the reasons that Christians have boycotted, or some Christians have boycotted Harry Potter, is because they think it dabbles too much in the occult. It's a fantasy movie, right? But I noticed those same Christians don't have the same problem with Lord of the Rings, right? Which is the same kind of thing. I mean, Gandalf in Lord of the Rings is a wizard, right? I mean, he's doing these occult kind of things. Even Chronicles of Narnia has some of that in it. So I think we're a little bit inconsistent if we're going to say, well, we can't really watch movies because that have this kind of thing in it. Because, you know, according to Deuteronomy 18, we're supposed to stay away from the occult and all this, right? But these are meant to be fantasy movies. And it turns out that Harry Potter has more in common with Jesus of Nazareth versus, versus or, 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 as compared to almost any other uh, character in modern fiction. And uh, let me just give you an example for yes, four please. reasons why Harry Potter parallels Christ. And J.K. Rowling, who wrote the whole series, will tell you the same thing. In fact, here are four things that happens to Harry Potter. And let me see if, if our audience can pick up on how they parallel Jesus. Harry Potter is prophesied as the savior before he's born. Harry Potter has to live a morally upright life to be the savior. Harry Potter dies trying to save his friends. And then Harry Potter resurrects from the dead <laughs> in order to save his friends and to protect his friends, to save the world, to defeat the evil, in this case, Voldemort. But Voldemort's playing the Satan figure. And what J.K. Rowling, who wrote the whole series, says she says that uh, the entire series can be epitomized by two Bible verses that you find in the books and, of course, in the movies. And these two Bible verses are, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's 1 Corinthians 15. And the other Bible verse is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's, that's, of course, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And she says those two movie or those two Bible verses epitomize the entire series. And I haven't talked about it that much because I don't want to give readers, I don't want to tip off readers as to where this whole thing's going, right? It would be like a spoiler alert to say, look, if you know the Bible, you're going to kind of know where Harry Potter, what, what Harry Potter's, how it's going to end, 